today a video on how you can perfectly choose fonts for your graphic design projects using design wisdom and insight. So welcome back to Satori Graphics and we're going to quickly dive into the four main key areas that you need to consider when you're choosing typography or fonts for your graphic designs. Also sponsoring today's video is WebJets which is an educational tool that has been voted as one of the best in 2019 and we're going to be taking a closer look at WebJets later in the video. So follow along for now on some tips on choosing fonts for your design projects with wisdom and then see how you can use WebJets to help with your projects to be more organized and streamlined at the end of the video. Now there are two main reasons for effective and professional typography in graphic design. Firstly, we need to make sure the reader does not have any problems within their reading experience and that they can gain all of the information within a typography. Now, secondly, the typeface itself and the aesthetics of it need to do justice to the overall design and to evoke certain feelings that are in total harmony to that design. The typeface should be an extension of the message and the feel of the entire situation depicted within the design itself. Typography is an art, yes, that's true, but it also is a very important function for delivering a message or information. One of the first things that you must absolutely do is identify who is going to be viewing your designs and thus looking at your typography. Is it going to be mainly groups of lawyers and professionals? Or maybe the design is targeted at working class society? Or even is it aimed at children? Now, if this is not obvious to you at this stage in the design, then it's your job to find out who is going to be targeted. Much like designing a logo where you need to target the design to a specific audience, you do need to target your typography to the right people. This ensures the right person is going to engage with the design in the intended way. This goes for pretty much every example of graphic design, but you do need to have this in mind from the start of the project. To seasoned designers, this is second nature and instinctive, but you need to remember who your typography is being aimed at and why. For example, you wouldn't use the font Garamond for a school nursery design, or at least I hope you wouldn't anyway. One of the most common mistakes made when choosing a font is not considering the body text or the header text. Body typefaces are used for book text, uh, magazines, newspapers, and also website content, and any lengthy passages. These fonts are easy on the eyes and they're easy to read, but it's important that they're not distracting so users can easily skim across the text. This is the category of fonts such as Times New Roman and Arial. Display or decorative typefaces on the other hand are less practical and are really never suitable for reading at length. These are the type of fonts that scream, look at me, and they come in various different degrees of usefulness, from the bold to the all caps fonts that might be used for headlines, to the fonts that are very literal and obvious. Display fonts can make a big impact when used in the right way, but when used incorrectly, they can make a design look busy and amateurish or completely unreadable. So when creating your design, make sure to choose the main body font that is both legible and relevant to the design message, and then pair the header font to this also. You're going to want to make this font pair work well as a team, and both relate back to the overall message of your design. Now this is a crucial step and many designers forget to do it, or they simply just don't think it's important. But you do need to run tests on your typeface relating to the final medium that they're going to be used on. So if your text final destination is paper, then print it out and see how it looks on paper. Your type might look really decent on screen, but then when you come to printing it out, it might look completely different or just not suitable. 
the font is mainly strictly going to be used on screens, then check it both on PC and also Mac, and also at different resolutions. I would also suggest that printing out the font in various different sizes is useful if the final destination is print. So now we're going to actually test your knowledge of the content in today's video. And if you have been listening, it shouldn't be too difficult. What were the two main reasons for good use of typography in graphic design? Legibility and balance, legibility and message relevancy, legibility and contrast, or legibility and memorability. How did I say the typeface can engage a specific audience with the design? By sending the right message through typeface aesthetics, by use of color, by contrasting with the visual aspects of the design, by being impacting. What font did I say would be a terrible idea for a children's design? Helvetica, Times New Roman, Century Gothic, or Garamond? In the video, I mentioned that the main body text should be easily paired with any font, easily read over long passages of text, easily identified, or easily contrasted with the visuals. So here is WebJets, and you can actually download this totally for free, and that's what I'm using here, it's the free version. I've used WebJets to organize and formulate ideas for today's video that you've just watched. However, WebJets is useful for planning and conducting pretty much any project. As you can see here, I've added some boards on the talking points of today's video that I wanted to get across. And also, I've actually added some questions for the quiz that was at the very end. Creating these boards was easily done by dragging and dropping them onto the backdrop from the toolbar at the very bottom of the screen. I also dragged and dropped some images from Google as inspiration for the thumbnail of today's video. Visual inspiration is always handy to have when working on a project in a digital manner like this. Now one really neat feature of WebJets is that you can drag and drop YouTube videos directly onto your project workboard. So for example here, I've got an old video of mine on the subject of typography that I can refer back to while making decisions and working on my project. The video also runs really smoothly as well, and it's a great integration to the tool. And like I said, it's easily done just by heading to the bottom toolbar menu and then dragging and dropping the YouTube icon and then searching for your videos. So after a search of my channel, I end up with 10 options. I found that WebJets was very easy to use and the entire interface runs smoothly and it's pretty self-explanatory on the way it functions. Also the fact it's free is really great too but you can also upgrade from the free version at any time. So yeah, check out the links down below for more info on WebJets and see how you can improve your workflow on any project with this resource today. So I hope you did well on the quiz and also if you enjoyed today's video, please do drop a like and also a comment down below. My subscription-based website has been launched. There's a lot of exclusive content and also free downloads as well as the chance of one-on-one -on -one help and an engaging brief with myself. So be sure to check that out, link down below too. Have a great day and until next time, design your future today. Peace.